Now recently we got almost 10 different ship owners looking at such technologies. And specifically for the tanker segment. Uh, instead of, for, for example, container ship, where the power demand for running such system is much more. Uh, so for the tanker segment, uh, Suez Max and DLCC are the most popular right now, and also for new building, compared to retrofit, where the involvement of the ship owners and the technical department are much more in depth. So my message today is uh, burn the most, mo the most affordable fuel, operate globally and save money. To me, this is the main message when you decide to install a marine scrubber. The DuPont marine scrubber are engineered by Belco. Belco is a very popular company in the refining sector for land-based application. We are based in New Jersey, 50 employees, and we started with wet scrapping technology since 1992. We have more than 300 references worldwide for land-based and marine. Some of our relevant customers that are also popular in the marine industry as charters are Valero, Tamoil, Total, Shell, Luke Oil, and Saudi Aramco. These customers and as charters will be predominant in, in a certain way to push the ship owner to install scrubbers because the ships will be more competitive in this 10-year time frame. Just to speak briefly about the near future scenario, we will listen to many different speakers. Uh, I think that the stable, the, we will see stable pricing differential between HFO and marine gas oil until the 2020. The HFO will continue to serve the industry, at least the oil major will try to accommodate the user needs. Also, the marine gas oil production will increase for sure. Estimations are from the actual 64 up to 230 million tons per year. The MGO production requires refineries upgrade and additional processes, meaning additional cost, even if you use blends. I think that ship operators of the planet and early scrubber installation will have a great competitive advantage in general. Most of the ship design already have provision to include allowances for space and also for power demand, sea chest also. So the impact of the cost to install a scrubber on a new build is very limited. In general, starting from 2019, 2020, we will see a sudden increase for MGO demand and also for scrubbers. So I think this will negatively impact the equipment costs and on-time deliveries. Then in July we will see what will happen with the MPC-71. Marine scrubbers provide a flexible fuel sourcing, meaning that you are not to stay stick to a 0.5 sulfur percentage. This is a great advantage in these 10 year times. We provide, in general, a return of investment that is below two years, especially for new builds. If you plan now to install a scrapping system, you will shorten the return of investment. Because in the near future, we will see an addressable market of around 15,000 ships. And this will lead to a price increase, because everybody in this industry tries to source equipment from third parties. So if we reduce the time schedule, the price will increase. If you have a scrubber operating in 2018 as a pilot, you will get experience for crew maintenance. And also, this will drive you to get the most optimized system for your fleet beyond the 2020. As I mentioned, limited impacting cost for new builds. Also, when you plan for a new build, the yard is taking the responsibility throughout the project, making the, the work much easier for a ship owner. The return of investment is influenced by several factors. For example, for a retrofit, the installation cost has a much more impact compared to a new building. If you schedule 
a retrofit of a scrubber during a scheduled dry dock, you can save some money. If you do on-purpose dry docking because we are approaching the 2020, the cost will go up. Also, from the installation point of view, the different type of scrubbers has different impact. For a retrofit, I warmly suggest to go for an inline design to limit the impact of installation cost, while for a new build, new type with bypass integrating all the sources can be a valid alternative. There are essential components of the scrubbing system. I always use this slide, very easy to understand. We need a water source, we need a centrifugal pump. This is why we require uh, power. Uh, water treatment equipment for closed loop or in alternative as an option also for the open loop. But many operators doesn't like to stay above the IMO requirement because it's not requested. Plus, an essential part is the monitoring system for air and water parameters. We have different inlet design configuration. I talk about the single stream, popular for cruise ship and ferries, but also for retrofit of cargo. We can also include an optional bypass line. Or the multi-stream, very popular for new build where you can accommodate several sources into one single tower with an optional bypass line. This also reduces the equipment, the auxiliary equipment to be installed because you just need uh, two pumps as uh, providing the water. And in case of a multi-stream, you require a mixing box unit where you connect several sources and you try to reduce the pressure drop across the tower. You can also uh, include the boiler with a dedicated fan. We do also some customization. This is, for example, what we call fit line. This is a slim and tall tower, typical application for container ship, bulk carrier, and ferries. Or, in alternative, we can have. Sorry. Oh, oh. Okay. We have also a Versa line that is larger but shorter. One application could be from tankers with SCR installed or with a huge economizer. So we always design on purpose. We don't use engineering on the shelf. I want to give you some feedback about uh, what Greek ship owners prefer. Currently, the preferred configuration is the open loop because you can capture the 80% of the fuel saving during the sailing mode. You can have some limitation in European ports, no water discharge, meaning that we have to maintain an MGO circuit on board. Also, the all stream configuration for the new build is very popular. Customer wants to capture all the saving as much as possible, meaning connecting also diesel generators and boilers. For retrofit, the single stream is popular to limit the impact of the return of investment, of the installation cost, and keep the return of investment below the two years. We can also provide a closed loop that is downsized just to cover the load from diesel generators and boilers where you are in port, so fully flexible. This is a case study for a Swiss Max tanker, a typical 160,000 K, one main engine, 17 megawatts, some generators, boilers. In this case, we have a tier two engine, SCR plus clubber. The customer choose to go for an inline configuration with no bypass for the main engine, uh, and also the diesel generator. So this is a single tower to accommodate everything. The system is sized for the main engine at 90%, two diesel generator at 100%, and with a total flow of 140,000 kilos per hour with a circulation pump motor that required 160 kilowatts. We have some recent progresses that we would like to announce. We have now a letter of intent with Nav Navios Ship Management that endorses Belco as the preferred supplier for ex exhaust gas cleaning system. We are closely working with them on a feasibility and economic study. We also enlarge our strategic uh, partnership with Golden Screen Technology now we are serving customers worldwide uh, to provide after sales guarantee and whatever needs you may have. 
We have some recent successful installation for two new buildings in China and one retrofit. We are now installing multi-stream hybrid scrubbers this, uh, for a ship designed by Delta Marine. You will see some picture here. So installation occurring January 17. <coughs> and some picture of the scrubbers fabricated in 2015 for a retro project. I'm on time, perfect. Thank you very much.